Hello Internet, Seth Skorkowski, and welcome to part 7 of our review slash overview slash how-to for Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. Today we'll be taking a look at... Yes, 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 no, oh, oh, damn! Psionics. Psychic and mental powers are a familiar staple to science fiction used countless times, and Traveler is no exception. The Psionic section of the book, including the Scion career path, is separate from the regular skill rules because it's left to the Game Master to decide how much or how little they might want to include in their own campaign. Maybe none at all, or maybe it's something that belongs to only NPCs or alien monsters, or maybe a few lucky travelers. Or they might decide that they want to do a high psionics game, where you know, the whole group is a bunch of psionic warriors, kind of like Jedi. If you're playing in the Third Imperium setting, psionics do exist, but are banned. Scions living in Imperial space must conceal their powers or move to systems outside of the Imperium's control. Of course, other people, such as the Zodani, embrace and promote psionics. Some species may naturally have psionic powers, as well as alien creatures that the travelers might come across. How do I get psionics? For player characters, psionic powers can be attained, providing the Game Master allows psionics, in several different ways. The big three are Life Path, during the character creation process, there are moments, either during the pre-career education or on the life events table, which can happen during any term, that a character might awaken their psionic potential. Finding a teacher. Once the game has begun, a character might stumble across or search out a psionic teacher. How easy or difficult that is is up to the game master. Once the psion has been tested to reveal any psionic potential, they may begin their training. Finally, and the easiest method of them all. Hey dude, could I play a scion? Um, sure. Awesome. A player can simply start with a scion. The Traveler Companion gives us several additional pre-career education options, one of which is psionic community for characters who started out as scions. Sonic powers are measured through the size stat, and if you remember during the character creation video, I mentioned the size stat, stating that we're going to get to that later. Well, now is that time. When a character is tested for the psionic potential, that's when the psi characteristic is rolled. You roll it like you would for any other stat, just 2d6. However, with this one, age can be a hindrance, and the older a character is when they begin their psionic journey, the less flexible their minds are. What that means is that for every term that a traveler has completed, they suffer a minus one on this roll when determining their psi score. Jack here has completed six terms during character creation, which means when determining what his psi stat is, he suffers a minus six. So let's say Jack gets tested. He rolls 2d6 and gets an 11. That's great. However, because he's so old, that minus six reduces that roll down to a five. So we fill that in. A stat of five is a minus one dice modifier, which means that yes, while he is psionic, he's not a very good one. Personally, I blame the fact that I can't be as good of a scion at 42 as I could have been if I had started at 18 on all those missing brain cells that I lost for, uh, unknown reasons. Now, after you've applied all the modifiers for age, if the psi stat comes up to a zero or less, that means that the character has no psionic potential and they can never be a scion. But if they do have psionic potential, that's when they can begin their training. Psionic training can take several months and not a few credits. There are five psionic talents. Telepathy, clairvoyance, telekinesis, awareness, and teleportation, any number of which a scion can possess. How we determine that is through this chart. A character rolls 2d6, adds their size stat modifier, which in Jack's case is a minus one, adds any other modifiers that are listed on this chart, and if we get an eight or more, we have that talent. Few things here. First, telepathy is the easiest talent. You can see that it gets a plus four on that roll. However, if telepathy is the first talent tested for, they succeed that roll automatically. However, after the first talent that a scion tests for, there is a cumulative minus one on each attempt. So they have a minus one on their second attempt, a minus two on their third, minus three on their fourth, etc., etc. So players might want to use some strategy in what order they do these tests in, balancing the pluses for each talent against the cumulative minuses for how many tests they've already taken and attempting to gain them. Once we've determine what stats we have, we list those on our character sheet as level 0 skills. 
Now you'll notice that with my sheet, it only has two slots here. So if you end up with more talents than slots, players are going to need to note them somewhere, maybe on the back, or modify their sheet in a way that way they can list them all out and what level they're at. While there are only five basic talents, each of these talents has various abilities they can do. Think of them like schools of magic that you'd find in many fantasy RPGs. So if a scion has the telepathy talent, for example, they have access to all the abilities that come with it. Each of those has their own effects, difficulties, and costs, much like spells in a fantasy game. Using psionics is like using any other skill in Traveler. The Traveler attempting to use their talent simply rolls 2d6, adds their dice modifier for their current size stat, plus the skill level for whatever the talent's in, and if they get the target number or higher, they succeed. However, there's also a cost for each talent used, and a Scion must temporarily reduce their size stat by however many Psi points they've used. This means their size stat modifier goes down as their Psi gets lower and lower, making future successes harder to achieve. Psi points are regained at the rate of one point an hour, starting three hours after psionics were last used. A scion must have at least one point to activate a talent, but if that talent costs more psi points than they currently have, the remaining points are treated like physical damage, which then lowers their other stats. Also, even if a scion attempts to use their psionics but they fail their skill roll, the attempt still costs them one psi point. Each ability has a reach, the effective range that it can be used to. A sound may also increase that range by one band if they double its psi cost, or they can increase it by two range bands by quadrupling the cost. For example, Read Surface Thoughts, an ability under the Telepath talent, has a long range and costs two psi. However, they can increase that to very long range if they use four psi, or even up to distant range for eight psi points. So they roll 2d6, add the level of their telepath ability, plus their psi stat modifier, and if they get an eight or more, they succeed. They reduce the number of psi points from whatever their current psi stat is, and that is it. Of course, different abilities have different difficulties. A telepathic mind link is difficulty four, while a telekinetic flight is difficulty 10. A player with a psionic character should make really good notes about what abilities they have access to, and and information as far as ranges, the costs, the difficulties, and the effects, again, much as you'd expect a spellcaster to do in other role-playing games. The Scion Career Path If Sonic abilities are unlocked before or during character creation, those characters have the option of taking the Scion Career. This works like any of the other career paths, but it's only available to Scions. The big difference here is that psionic abilities appear as skills, and can be increased the same way as skills during character creation if they're rolled. However, if you roll an ability that your scion doesn't possess, such as teleportation here, if you lack that ability but roll it up under your career path, that means you may test for it again just like you did before. Just remember that minus one dice modifier for this roll for all the previous talent tests that you've done up to this point, including when you tested for that same talent as before. So the chances aren't as good of you getting it this time as they were earlier when you failed the roll, but hey, a second chance is a second chance. Of course, if there's going to be psionic powers in your Traveler universe, there's also going to be psionic equipment. And we get a good selection of those, from drugs that can either enhance or neutralize a scion's power, armor options, either protecting from psionic attacks or being enhanced by the user's psionics, psionic weapons or targeting systems, or even tools to detect scions, a must-have for a good bounty hunter and search for rogue scions. Some of this equipment appears in the core book, while more appears in the central supply catalog. Finally, let's look at non-standard psionics. While we do have a good list of psionic talents and abilities, game masters might want more. The book encourages adding your own, but most of these NPC abilities or plot devices that the travelers must overcome versus powers that you grant them that they can do that can accidentally throw off the balance of your game. So if you want your villain to shoot lightning out of their fingers like the Emperor can, or use telekinetics to make some sort of force bubble around them, that way it can deflect bullets or work his armor, then go for it. Game masters should always feel free to use and borrow ideas from different comic books, movies, video games, or anywhere else they like. But, like with house rules, for any game out there, just be careful with how you employ them and definitely have fun. Okay, well that's it for Psionics. Nice and short video for a change. The next video we're going to be going over law levels, spaceports, and how to read the Universal World Profile. Hey, thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of our stuff, such as game reviews, or how-tos, or even more of this Traveler series, just hit that subscribe button. Till next time, Travelers, you have a great day. You know, I'm just going to come out and say it. Hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster by my side. Am I right? Whoa!